Good evening. Welcome to another edition of Focus with Tim Thomas. I'm your host, Tim Thomas, and we're coming to you with a very special edition of our program. We are here at the Kentucky Veterans Cemetery West, and I'm located here in this beautiful outdoor chapel, which is the committal area of the Veterans Cemetery. And in just a few moments, we're going to be touring this beautiful cemetery with the director uh, of the cemetery, Mr. Richard Stanley. He's going to be coming and sharing all the aspects of the cemetery with us. And this is a very special program because we're honoring veterans. And during this time of uh, Veterans Day and uh, during this time of honoring veterans, there's no other way better than to visit the resting place of those who have served our nation in all branches of the service. And not only that, for those few that lay here who have paid the ultimate price. We hope you will stay tuned to our program and then we're going to come back here toward the end of the program and Mr. Stanley is going to share a lot about this outdoor chapel. Stay tuned for the rest of our program. Joined now by Mr. Richard Stanley, who is the director of the Kentucky Veterans Cemetery West, and we're glad that he is here to uh, give us a tour of this beautiful, beautiful resting place here. Welcome back. Thank you, Tim, and we're glad to be here today. Uh, last time we met in your studio, and today you've come out to, to actually view the facility with us. Yes. And we're anxious to share with your TV station, your viewers, mm -hmm. what we actually do represent here for the Kentucky Department of Veterans Affairs and the veterans of Western Kentucky. Appreciate that. And again, tell us, I, I know that you are a veteran yourself, and tell us a little bit about your experience veteran and your rank okay. and all. All right. Um, I joined the service in 1979. I did a little over 24 years. Uh, I retired as a senior master sergeant in the United States Air Force. I was a uh, maintenance man, hmm. practically uh, all of my career. And uh, when they were building this place, I applied for the job of, you know, taking care of it. Mm -hmm. And with a background like maintenance, that's what we do a lot of. So uh, buildings and grounds maintenance was very important. And that's how we continue to maintain these facilities, just like we would if we were active duty. Wow. You know, uh, this has a very special place in your heart, this, this cemetery here and, and the people that are laid to rest here. Uh, when you look around and see this beautiful area and we're going to tour some of it, uh, it's important for people to realize uh, just what people have sacrificed for this country. Absolutely. Every man and woman that has served this country has done so with vigor. I mean, they've they've come out from their homes, from their towns, all those things, and they've been pulled off to places that they didn't know. Mm -hmm. But yet they've still served this country with passion, and and uh, they've all contributed to the greater effort of this country and knowing what this country is all about. You know, it's our freedoms and it's all of those types of things that these men and women have fought for all those years. Mm -hmm. We've gone through World War I, uh, Korea, Vietnam, Iraq, Persian Gulf, all of those and millions and millions of soldiers that have served this country. Wow. Uh, yeah, and, and when you think about that and think about those sacrifices, it, it, it humbles you. Oh, it does. It really does. There's, there's no way to repay that debt. Mm -hmm. That debt is something we cannot repay. Mm -hmm. The Kentucky Department of Veterans Affairs steps up in every manner and every way that we can mm -hmm. to provide support for those veterans. Mm -hmm. But we can never repay that debt. No, no. I think it was John Kennedy said that the cost of freedom is high, but Americans have always paid that bill. And they have always paid that bill. Yeah. yeah. There, there are actually 18 young men and women buried here mm -hmm. that paid the ultimate sacrifice. Wow. That they lost their lives during combat. Mm -hmm. And we have 18 of those young men and women laid to rest here. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. Uh, when was this established here? The cemetery was uh, started 
uh, in construction around 2002. It opened for its first burial, mm -hmm. uh, March 2004. March 1st, 2004 is when we opened for our first internment. Mm. Uh, we've done a little over 4,100 4, services wow. in the last 14 years that we've been open. Wow. Uh, can you imagine? I, I, and it constantly, every day, there are there, yes, burials. Yeah, we, we average about two burials a day. We did a little over 370 services last year. Mm -hmm. The year before, it was 333 services. So we are continually doing veterans burials. And, and I've seen it. I've been here, as I said, a little, a little, a little over 15 years. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that progress from World War II veterans to Korean War veterans for one year and then and the majority of the burials. And now it's Vietnam. Huh. Uh, the majority of the barrels that we do are Korean Vietnam. Yeah. Um, we're going to take a look because I, I know some new things have been uh, built here and established yeah. here and uh, look at your outdoor chapel, if you will. Uh, yes. uh, what has been added here lately? Uh, in, the, in, the near, er, in the near past, mm -hmm. we have added a new columbarium wall. Mm -hmm. uh, for, you, for those of you that don't know what a columbarium wall is, imagine a mausoleum style wall where the cover can be removed and an urn placed inside. It would be like a mausoleum for a casket, only this is called a columbarium wall. Mm -hmm. It's actually columns of open niches with covered marble covers on the front. So the headstone is actually the marble cover that goes on the front of the headstone. Uh, for one that may in our listening audience that may be listening, uh, veterans, or uh, uh, family members of veterans, uh, that might want to apply to have their loved one or themselves be brought here. What is the procedure? Uh, most of the time a funeral home will contact us, especially if it's a casketed service, and they'll, they'll uh, coordinate with our staff mm -hmm. about scheduling an appointed time. So if they have the funeral, say on a Tuesday, they would schedule with us Tuesday afternoon. You know, two to three hours after the funeral, they would schedule for us and they would drive directly here. Now that's for a casketed service. Uh, most cremation services are done the same way, but we have a lot of families that have taken the urn home mm -hmm. from the funeral. Once the funeral's finished, the family will take the urn home, and they'll hold it there for three or four or five years, and when they're ready to do the burial, the family will call us directly. Wow. So yeah. if the family has the urn themselves and the, and the funeral home is no longer in that picture, they can call us directly. As far as paperwork is concerned, what, what is needed? Uh, uh, most of the time, we will uh, require the Veterans DD Form 214. That changes a little bit for Guard and Reserve. It also changes a little bit for Active Duty. Yes. Uh, but most of the time, 95% of our services are done off of a DD Form 214 and an internment application mm -hmm. that the funeral home would fill out for us. Got you. Uh, does that include uh, burial detail? It does. Uh, by, by law, a veteran is entitled to taps being played and the flag fold in presentation to the family. Now, retirees, some uh, some branches of service provide a firing detail that will come out and also fire weapons over the veterans uh, service. Uh, we have a local group called the Pinderal Honor Guard that will actually come out for any veteran. They don't have to be a retired veteran. And they will fire weapons at the veterans service as well. Can a veteran uh family members be buried here with, uh, along with the We do bury dependents and, and the key there is dependents. Most of the time the VA recognizes that a child can be a dependent all the way up to age 21. 24 if they're attending college they can still be a dependent. But once they are no longer being supported by the veteran then they are no longer dependents. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you have a handicapped child there's not going to be an age restriction on that because they are still a dependent of the veteran. They live in the veteran's household they are still a dependent by having a dependence ID card no matter what age they are. So if it's a handicapped child, it varies a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course the spouse. Yes, and of course the spouse. Mm -hmm. So yeah. automatically independent yes. in, that, in that range. Uh, you have now how many buried out? A little over 4,000. A little, a little 4,156 to be exact. Wow. I looked it up this morning because I knew you guys were coming. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's been an honor to preserve preside over each and every one of those services because we do that. We have a cemetery rep present at the service because at the service we give the family a next to kin pack which shows them exactly where the loved one's buried. So it has a cemetery map in it, it has a burial map in it, a letter from us stating that uh, we're here if they need us 
and how to contact us directly, the family information. And then of course we give them a headstone proof. And that headstone proof has to be turned around pretty quick. Yeah. Usually three to four days we have to have it back. Uh, because the VA wants to mark every veteran's grave within 60 days. Hmm. So when we get the headstone proof back, we put it into the computer, well then it goes into the engraver. And that's where it slows down. Yeah. So, but once the engraver uh, gets the headstone cut, they ship it to us directly and we place it in the ground and then we call the family and let them know that that headstone has been placed and they can come out and view it at any time. Gotcha. I know, uh, Richard, uh, having worked with you, being in the funeral business myself and worked with you on and off several times and, and the excellent job you do uh, in accommodating uh, all of the Thank funeral you. homes uh, right. throughout Western Kentucky. Uh, I know this is something you can't do by yourself. You've got a staff, uh, great people working with you we do. Uh, as well. Tell me a little bit about it. Those people that are there are actually uh, seven full-time employees here uh, at the cemetery. Myself, the administrator, and then we have uh, five on the grounds mm -hmm. that actually uh, do the burials, maintain the facilities. They maintain all the vehicles here. We, we're pretty much self-sufficient when it comes to that. I mean, there are some things, you know, that we can't do, so we have to get a contractor to come in and handle, you know, mm -hmm. large, large uh, bits of work, but other than that, most of the time it's uh, pretty much in house. Right. Uh, we're going to start and kind of pause and kind of go through and see well, where you want to take us first. To I'd like to start right behind us here. Matter of fact, we can go ahead and talk about that right now. The yes. first burial section that you see here is section nine. That is actually pre placed double depth crypts, and it's the only section like it here at the cemetery. So there are 1,290 pre placed crypts in that area. So, in other words, under the ground already, there's two room crypts for husband and wife, huh. and there's a concrete shelf between them. So if the veteran were to pass away, we would take the lid off, we would lift the shelf out, we would put the veteran's casket and we would put the concrete shelf back in, and then when the widow passes away, we would put the casket in on top of the shelf. That is neat. Yeah. 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 And it's, a, it's a great addition to the cemetery. Mm -hmm. um, most of the VA is going this route. Is that they're, right? they're trying to get away from actually setting the box the day of the service. Mm -hmm. I mean, we still we still do that here, but the VA is trending in that direction. Another question I was going to ask you: How many veteran cemeteries are located across the state? Across the state of Kentucky, there are three national cemeteries that are still doing burial, but the state of Kentucky actually has five facilities that are now open and running for burial in the state of Kentucky. No family should have to drive over 75 miles to obtain burial space in one of those facilities. So there's this one in western Kentucky, there's one in Radcliffe, which is just outside Fort Knox, mm -hmm. those are your two big military installations in the state. Then we have uh, one in uh, Williamstown, Kentucky, we have one in Greenup County, and one in Hyden County, right. which is in the southeast one of Kentucky. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're spread across the state of Kentucky, as I said, so that no family should have to drive more than about 75 miles to get to a facility. Wow, that's really good. And, uh, one of the premier ones it in is. the state. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna move a little further. All right, very good. Richard, we're standing in front of this view granite uh, memorial. Tell us a little bit about this. Uh, this monument is dedicated to the men and women that served in the Revolutionary War, mm -hmm. which separated the United States from Great Britain. Huh. Uh, you know, those men served in that war, but we were a young nation at that time. Yes. And our government didn't have very many funds. So they paid those men and women with land. Hmm. So Christian County was part of the plots. And the land here in Christian County were actually giving to the, given to these patriots that served in the Revolutionary War to fight for the freedom of our country. Yeah. And their families, a lot of these families, are still residents of Christian County, Kentucky. Huh. Uh, the SAR, which is the Sons of the American Revolution, and the DAR are the ones who actually placed this monument here mm -hmm. in memory of those Patriots that served during that battle. Wow. It's a beautiful, beautiful it is a memorial. Beautiful stone. It is. Uh -huh. It is. It's in the perfect place. It is because it faces what we call the scattering guard. The scattering guard, exactly. And we're going to walk over this way, and you can right. tell good. us a little bit Absolutely. about that. A lot of traditional burials happen here mm -hmm. during uh, during the year, mm -hmm. but. A lot of families are going non-traditional services, especially mm -hmm. with cremations. Sure. Uh, we, we have done non-traditional casketed services 
but and that's pretty much you know a pine box without an outer container they're called green burials and a lot of people are going to that yes but a scattering garden is for actually a family that wants to scatter the veterans or the dependents ashes mm -hmm. back to the earth hmm. so the family would come here with a scheduled appointment uh -huh. and we would meet at the committal shelter we would take care of doing the committal because uh -huh. funerals are broken up into two parts you have the memorial and then you have the committal at the cemetery mm -hmm. well the committal is done at our committal shelter mm -hmm. we render military honors there and if the family wants to scatter the urn the ashes from the urn we will take that urn and come up here and the family would gather on our bridge yeah let's take a picture of that let's go ahead and take a walk over this All right, way very good
Right. So if you're out here after hours, they're going to know you're here because they subsequently, whenever they get a break or they get a uh, few moments on their shift, they'll drive through here for you. So it's well protected, well secured, and uh, continues to be a, a great lasting memorial. It is, and that's, and that's the reason it's built. It's, it's a memorial to those men and women that serve our country. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. Now I will add that if a veteran's ashes are scattered, they still get a headstone. But that headstone is set in a different location, and it actually reads in memory of John Doe. So if John Doe's ashes were scattered, his headstone couldn't say John Doe was buried here. Right. But the headstone does say in memory of John Doe. And in this military service, awards and decorations, it's the date that he was born and the date that he passed. Right. Yeah. And uh, I've noticed the plaque. What is that plaque? The, the plaque is from the people that donated the money for us to build it, and that which is the AMVETS folks here in Oakland. we're standing at where we are at our committal shelter oh. as I mentioned earlier funerals are broken up into two parts mm -hmm. you have the funeral service usually at the funeral home or at the church mm -hmm. at the members church and then they come to the cemetery usually if you go to a country cemetery or even the large city cemetery the funeral homes responsible for setting up a canvas tent mm -hmm. chairs for the family to sit down on our committal shelter takes the place of that so the VA wants to provide the best facilities that they can, yes. and we do. We want that family to remember this, yes. not that open grave side yes. service. So all of the services come here to the committal shelter, and we uh, take the veterans urn or casket into the facility, mm -hmm. and we post the veterans colors. So if it's an Army veteran, we post the Army colors. Air Force veteran, we post the Air Force colors. Mm -hmm. um, and we post those colors in there. And then we have the committal service earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. Mm -hmm. Usually uh, uh, accompanied by a reading of the 23rd Psalms, a small religious piece, or a poem, mm -hmm. usually by a minister or a family member. Yeah. Once that part is finished, we go directly to military honors. Mm -hmm. And depending on the service, whether it's a retiree, whether the family wanted rifles, taps, a piece of music, we can even, we have a PA system that we can actually play a specific piece of music if the family would like a piece of music played at that service. So we do the committal service here, mm -hmm. uh, and then we close with military honors and we present the flag to the next of kin. Uh, the facility is absolutely beautiful. What makes this facility different than the other ones in the state is our columbarium wall that I was speaking about actually encircles our committal shelter. Huh. So all of the cubicles that you see, those are individual niches with anyone that has uh, got engraving on it has a veteran's urn in there. A lot of them today, Yes. have both the veteran's name and the dependent's name listed with their name. Because a lot of the spouses have passed and joined their husbands in that common area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And right across the, the street here, just across the road, you'll notice there is a brand new set of columbarium walls. Huh. Those walls were built uh, and finished this past February. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is we have just a little over 45 slots left in the original wall. Mm -hmm. So the VA, the federal VA, gave us the money to construct these new columbarium walls. Wow, you can and, uh, get a picture across the street there. And when we finished the last niche on this wall, we will move over to wall one. Uh -huh. And I know you might step back and wonder why we numbered them one, two, three, four. Uh -huh. That's because the VA is not done with us yet. 
Eventually, we will have one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. seven, eight. There will be 12 walls huh. eventually. And, and I'll be retired before we build the next yeah. set, I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, the VA projects that this is 10 years worth of niche, niches to, mm. for use for us, based on our burial rate that we've had in the past. Yes, yes, yes. And I, I noticed the burial sets here, the hearse rolls through, and the casket is placed here on this. It is. If it's, barrel. if it's a retiree and we have, or we have the local honor guard here, the family can opt to use them as pallbearers. Yes. So it's really, a sh really, really uh, a nice part of the service when you have military pallbearers to move that casket up to the bier. And then, then they perform military honors following. And I know that you have uh, some scheduled today. We actually have two services scheduled today, yes. Now, one question I'd like to ask is that maybe uh, someone listening has a family member or veteran that has already been interred in another cemetery. And they see this program, they say, I, I would really love for my loved one to be brought to the veteran cemetery. Can that be done? Oh, absolutely. We've we've been doing that since we opened. Uh, the first year we were open, I think we moved three veterans from other cemeteries in the community mm -hmm. to the veteran cemetery here. Uh, the way that is done mm -hmm. is they don't contact us. They have to contact the local funeral home because you have to get exhumation permits. You have to get all the proper permitting and stuff before you can move a casket here. Mm -hmm. uh, but once that's done and the proper DD form 214 is provided to us, contact information for the family will be ready it doesn't take very long to do that the hard part is getting those permits and everything squared away but the funeral home takes care of that right we're going to walk up under here and, and take very some good. pictures and talk about it a little very bit. good peaceful yeah this is my favorite spot at the cemetery mm -hmm. this is where we render honors for our veterans we have seating for the family uh, the military comes in and they'll place the casket or the urn here in the communal shelter as I said, we'll post the colors for the veteran. The service today is for a dependent spouse, so we put out the U.S. flag for her service. She's still a lady that served more than likely 20 years with her husband sometimes. Yes. They may not have that DD Form 214, but a lot of them served just like we did. Wow. So the seals representing the five branches of service, U.S. Army. And these are in the order of which they became authorized by the U.S. government. Great. So the U.S. Army, U.S. Marine Corps, Navy, Air Force, and Coast Guard. Mm. So uh, all five of the branches of service. And I noticed the ceiling, this has some history to it. It does have a little history to it. Uh, when the cemetery was being built, the chaplains from Fort Campbell were down at uh, Fort Polk, Louisiana, and they were on retreat down there, and they saw that an old chapel was being torn down. Mm. The church at that time, uh, as it was built on Fort Polk, was 101 years old, and that glass was scavenged by those chaplains and brought back here to us from the contractor. One, and it was incorporated in our ceiling. And it's just a beautiful addition to the cemetery. So it's 115 years old now. Wow, wow. Yeah. And you were saying when at noontime, the sun. Yeah, when the sun gets high in the sky, it will literally light. And you can see partially where we're headed. Yes. If we head towards noon, you can see the colors of the stained glass coming in on the wall. But this entire wall will be lit up in beautiful color. Uh, during the services in the, mor in the wow. late morning and early afternoon. I would like to think that that's not by accident. No, <laughs> that's divine providence, right? Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some of your most memorable. Some of those are heartbreaking. Yes. Uh, we had a young soldier that lost a uh, one-year-old mm. who sat in that front chair mm. and his seven-year-old daughter was sitting over here with her grandmother. Mm -hmm. And of course they're grieving. And part of that reason I'm here mm -hmm. is because the VA took care of me when I needed The VA buried my granddaughter as well. Mm -hmm. She's on Fort Riley, Kansas. But that's part of the reason I'm here. Mm -hmm. But he's grieving. The minister's preaching. She gets a napkin from her grandmother and dries her father's tears and oh, tells him it's going to be okay. We'll see him again in heaven. <laughs> Do you think there was a dry eye in this <laughs> facility? There was. So the old first sergeant is standing over there with tears in his eyes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So it's, it's a memorial to children even. Mm -hmm. uh, probably my favorite military service. We had uh, Command Sergeant Major mm -hmm. from Fort Campbell. Mm -hmm. And that's the top dog of the enlisted folks out there. Yeah. All of his pallbearers were previous Command Sergeant Majors mm -hmm. from Fort Campbell. Yeah. So there was a lot of stripes walking the line that day. <laughs> but they had the 101st Band here. Oh, to pay tribute to that man. Yeah. And uh, well-deserved. 
yeah. well, was 32 years of service mm. to, this, to this country. Mm. But um, there are some memorable services. I think uh, the funny service that I remember is I took a phone call that said, uh, Kentucky Veteran Cemetery West, this is Richard Stanley, how can I help you? Nobody said anything. Uh -huh. I was like, this is the Veteran Cemetery in Hopkinsville, can I help you? And the gentleman said, this is going to be odd to you. And I said, well, how can I help you? And he said, I want to bury my brother there. And his name is Richard Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we had the same name. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was a little bit of a funny. Yeah. <laughs> and then we, we did that veteran service and uh, He's probably now late to rest here with the rest of our veterans. Wow. Uh, just to think of uh, what this means to families to know that their loved one is being taken care of here. Absolutely. Uh, has to give you a lot of satisfaction as well. It does. And uh, we strive. I mean, our vision for the cemetery is to exceed the standards, mm -hmm. the expectations that those families have. When they mm -hmm. arrive here, we want to go above and beyond what they thought they were going to receive here for service. Mm -hmm. And we really do. Mm -hmm. um, I told you earlier that the federal VA gets to come inspect us mm -hmm. quarterly, or tri uh, it's on a triangular basis every three years. Yes. And uh, they came down back two months ago for the for our last inspection, and they brought along a survey that the federal VA does to the family. So when we put the family information in the computer for the federal VA. It generates phone numbers and addresses. They send out written surveys to the families. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud to say, in that survey, when they shared it with me, we have 100% customer satisfaction. Wonderful. Yeah. And yeah. as I said, I mean, if you're not here for that reason that we're here, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be doing 100%. Mm -hmm. But we have 100% customer sat family satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Funeral homes were like 99% mm -hmm. customer satisfaction. <laughs> So that, that says a lot. It does. That speaks volumes. It does. It really does. It does. Another thing, when families gather here and uh, in the cool of the day, uh, whether it's in the winter or late fall, you have blankets. We do. We actually, as I said, we try and go above and beyond. We don't have to do that. Uh -huh. We actually purchase funeral blankets that we tuck it, tuck the family in yeah. with, and uh, you know, try and keep them warm. We've got umbrellas if it's raining. Mm -hmm. We escort the family in under under an umbrella. Mm -hmm. So above and beyond. Yes, this gives you a sense. I had the opportunity to visit uh, the uh, cemetery there, the National Cemetery there in D.C. Right. And just to, uh, this reminds you so much of Arlington. Of our, yeah, yeah, Arlington reminds you so Arlington much. is a beautiful cemetery. Uh, my trip there, yes. I had to find Audie Murphy and uh, Sergeant York. Yeah. You yeah. know, you hear so much about those men who fought in World War II. I just, I wanted to seek out their graves. And, mm -hmm. and you know, a lot of people do. Because there's no grass around those graves. A lot of people go and pay heritage to those two men. Hmm. And so much so that there's no grass. <laughs> when people walked on it. And, and you, you know, uh, and there at Arlington, uh, it really takes more than one day to, to really get Oh, absolutely. It. it is so huge, yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you can spend a couple hours at the, tomb, at the tomb of the unknown soldier. Right. You know, paying your respects and watching the changing of the guard and all those, yes. all those things going on. Yes, yeah, yeah. So, uh, this nation has really honored their, they have. their veterans. They have. Uh, and they have really supported them even in death. Yes. And I mean, that started with Abraham Lincoln getting Congress to appropriate land, mm -hmm. for, you know, in Gettysburg. Yes. And uh, I think that the VA mm -hmm. has uh, gone well above and beyond even those expectations. Right. But the well known Gettysburg Address, where uh, one of the shortest speeches given and one of the in the top five most powerful speeches. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Written, I think, while he was on his way there yeah. on a train. Mm -hmm. and, and what a great nation we live in. We live in a great nation. And why do we have this great nation? Because of these. Because of these veterans. That's right. If we didn't have these veterans defending our rights, mm -hmm. we could be under totalitarian rule or something somewhere. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's because of these men and women that serve that we get the freedom to do what we want to do. Right. Richard, we're just glad that we've had the opportunity to just tour this, to, to share in, in this place, this memorable place here. And uh, we want to let you know how much we appreciate you uh, for your service to our country, uh, for your family supporting you as well. And not only that, but for how you are continuing your support 
of needing some rest here. Well, as I told you, the VA took care of me when I needed them. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. And we we'll hope you're here for a while. Yes, yeah. sir. You, you're just accommodating and you do so much for so many. Well, it's important that we take care of those who are grieving. Right, right. If someone, we're going to put on the screen, if someone would like to get in contact with you, how can they do that? Uh, you can contact us by phone at 270-889-6106, or you can send anything to my, my uh, state email at richard.stanley at ky.gov. Uh, anything you want to leave with our listening audience? Just that the facilities are here. We strive every day to honor every minute of service that these veterans have given to our country. And we do that not only on the day of the burial, but on Memorial Day. We have a huge ceremony here. And I would invite those that could come out on Memorial Day, please come and spend some time with us on Memorial Day. Every December, we do wreaths across America. I don't know if you've heard of that program, but we put wreaths on all the veterans' graves here. On December 15th this year is when it's going to take place here at Kentucky Veterans Cemetery West. So if you want to come out, spend a few minutes with us. We'll have a guest speaker. We'll have the 101st here to post the colors for us, and we're going to have a little ceremony. And what then time is that going to be on the future? It's going to be a, the ceremony is 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. We allow family members, wife, spouses, and things to come out at 10 30 and go ahead and place their wreath mm -hmm. because as soon as the ceremony is over we put wreaths on all the veterans graves so any spouse that hasn't marked her husband's grave at 10 30 will be marked right after the excuse mm -hmm. me, 11 o'clock service mm -hmm. so we want to invite you to take a part of it yes absolutely please come out and help us honor our veterans great great we've been talking to uh the honorable mr richard stanley who is the director of this the kentucky veterans cemetery west located right outside of Hopkinsville, Kentucky. We encourage you to come by, pay respect. You may not even have a loved one in this cemetery, but you might just want to come and pay homage uh, to those who have uh, fought in battle. And for those few who have laid here, have paid the ultimate price. There are a few here that have paid that ultimate price. Yes. Uh, so we encourage you to come, and if nothing else, just come and whisper prayer and remember them. Uh, on Veterans Day, and we want to honor all of our veterans, wherever you may be, and thank you for your service to our country. And I myself come from a long history of uh, family members that uh, served uh, in the armed forces. My uncle who served in World War I, and uh, uh, my brother who served in Vietnam, uh, both the Army and the Navy, who's passed on, a uh, nephew who served in Vietnam, and my dad, who was 93, I honor him, still living. So that's a blessing. And right there. served in World War II, uh, served over in the Philippine Islands. Uh, great, great veteran. I honor him as well on today. And what a blessing it is to look back and to remember those and to listen to some of the stories oh, yes. that he tells uh, those of those days. Those are things that we're losing. Yes. As those, as those veterans pass away, we're losing those memories that they have from mm -hmm. what it meant to them to serve <clears throat> this country. You know, we are coming upon this Veterans Day is the 100th anniversary of World War I, mm -hmm. the Armistice. Mm -hmm. So this, this Veterans Day, as I said, is the 100th anniversary of World War I. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's often important. It is. It is. May God bless each of you. We hope you've enjoyed our program. Tune in for another edition of Focus with Tim Thomas. I'm your host, and by all means, keep sharing the dream.